and welcome to the first More Methods podcast. Today we're talking about communicating complex ideas and to help me do that I'm joined by Ryan Cronin. Ryan has worked in a variety of different roles at the University of Cambridge involving communications, public engagement and outreach. Thanks for joining us today Ryan. Hi, thanks for having me. So, you have a lot of experience of helping researchers translate their research into something that the general public can understand. What would you say is the most important thing for researchers to remember when trying to communicate something complicated, but in a simple way? It can be quite a challenge if you're a researcher who spent years working on a very particular, very niche topic, Mm. to think about how to broaden the appeal of that to an audience that isn't from your academic field. And there's a bunch of little tips and tricks that you can use. And the first one really is the idea of an elevator pitch, which is literally, if you're in a lift with someone who mm-hmm. isn't from your field, yeah. can you explain your research to them in the time it would take you to go between floors? So Ooh, I like that. Sort of between 15 and 30 seconds. Okay. And that really allows you to tease out the important key message from your research without getting too bogged down in things like methodology or Well, you don't have results. time, do you? Well, really? exactly. Yeah. So what is the, the one sentence takeaway that you would summarise your research as? Okay. The second thing to be aware of is, of course, jargon and language, because Mm. anyone who's working in an academic field or a technical or professional field sort of swims around in a very particular set of terminologies that Mm. a lot of other people don't necessarily understand. It becomes almost a second language, really, doesn't it? Yeah, exactly. And in some cases, particularly in the sciences, you need to have those specific terms. Mm. I would suggest if you could eliminate jargon where possible, do so. Mm -hmm. And if you can't, can you see if you can provide a definition in everyday language for what a particular term means okay. in that context. Or maybe even use an example for a day-to-day scenario that people could understand, I suppose. Exactly. Visual examples are really good. Uh-huh. Um, so using something like a grapefruit to represent the universe. Yeah, I like that, yeah. As an idea. Yeah, yeah. Or human examples. So if you're working on a more historical piece of research, mm-hmm. rather than making it all about the dates and the big events, is there a personal story that you can tell? Mm. Give some, Give people something to connect with. Yeah. I really like that. So the actual sort of this person or this you know, period of history is sort of just like you, but without electricity, for example. You yeah, know, just, exactly. Just how could as you live? That. The, yeah. the flip side of, of any sort of communicating to a non-academic audience is don't worry about dumbing down mm-hmm. your research. Okay. That's not the, the appeal here. That's no. not the point. We're not treating people as if they don't understand complicated no, topics. People want to learn. They want to you know, get these new ideas. They do, absolutely. And if people feel that they're being dumbed down too, then they will switch off, I think. Yeah. So it isn't about that. It's about clarifying mm-hmm. and making your research accessible okay. to people who are no doubt highly intelligent, but are yeah. just not within that particular academic field. Yeah, so kind of giving them something new... To think about, but also not making them feel stupid because you're just you're using some stuff that's just that little bit too technical. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, cool. That makes a lot of sense. Do you think that there's any sort of research that can't be communicated simply to the public because it is just so complicated or so theoretical? In principle, no. Okay, I like that. That's a that's a challenge. <laughs> it is a challenge, and sometimes it is, and and sometimes you do have to work very closely with researchers Mm. to unpick these ideas yeah and sometimes you even do have to say well yeah this particular equation isn't going to make sense out of context that sort of thing no but in principle i think everything is communicable the whole point of research is to broaden knowledge and broaden understanding Mm -hmm. and the best way to do that is to have those ideas in society more broadly yeah definitely it is a challenge Mm. and particularly for people working at the very cutting edge of research it Uh is always going to be a challenge to integrate and communicate those ideas okay but i think it can be done and i think it can be done through liaising with what a lot of universities have i know cambridge Mm -hmm. has an excellent office of um, external affairs and communications fantastic and there are probably similar representatives across the universities as well yeah um they are people who do this for a living they will take complicated research and they will turn it into headlines yeah website articles, public engagement events. And, yeah. so, so find the person in your university who does that okay. and go and have a chat with them. And of course, a lot of these people, um, the sort of communications experts, they're, they're sort of, they're really good at what they do, but they don't ne- they're not necessarily experts in every single field possible. No, so someone absolutely. who looks after science, for example, may not know every single scientific thing possible. That's not really the point. No. It's that they know how to pick apart 
the research and talk with the person who's done that research to tease out those ideas and that's exactly. that's, and that's actually research. quite useful yeah it's quite useful that people who work in those roles are not necessarily experts mm. in the academic field yeah because it means that if a researcher can explain it to them yeah then they well, can explain it to you, the public yeah you've got the first step already happening trying to understand it and of course i would imagine as well you sort of mentioned earlier with all the the terminologies and being you know really into your research because you're working on it for so long a lot of the time or it may be a short project but either way you re- it becomes a part of your life yeah. um having somebody who isn't that expert who isn't hasn't been working with you from day one on something they have that that ability to step away you and can it's be more not, detached yeah there's not the sort of the emotional thing because you do get emotionally attached to what you're you working on what would be the point otherwise but yeah they have that that degree of separation so they can look at it quite sort of clinically might not be the right word but they can look at it you know in that start and thing potentially of find a get. connection or an angle that you might miss yourself as yes. a researcher exactly they might find a way to relate a particular aspect of it to contemporary politics yeah. or contemporary society yeah. in a way that you might otherwise not have thought of yeah and it's funny communication sort of reminds me a little bit of, of my job as a librarian i'm not an expert by any stretch of the imagination in the subjects that i support mm-hmm. But I do know how to find stuff and I know how to get the information and how to connect people up with yeah. the resources that they need. What are they going to go use all that stuff for? I wouldn't even start to try and understand because it's just not it's not even in my own headspace. But I have those skills in the same with it's, our colleagues in communications. Yeah, you, it's you a very, facilitate. Very um, and obviously with it being a very similar skill set, if you don't know how to access a communications office or equivalent at your university mm-hmm. then your library is a very very good second place to go to to talk yeah. about this kind of thing yeah well apart from this like you said explaining it to someone who doesn't know the the subject is a really good place to start yes. excellent so a bit of a, a cheeky question possibly but why do you think communicating research is important if you even think it is important is it <laughs> well if i may give a bit of a cheeky answer what's the point of doing it otherwise yeah, I like that. So what's the point of doing research if you're not going to talk about it? If it's going to sit it? in the drawer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with that, definitely. One of the main purposes of a university, one of the main purposes of research, has to be to broaden the horizon of knowledge. Yeah. And the best way to do that is by getting those academic ideas into public discourse that can become part of the global conversation about what it is to be human and to understand what that means in relation to the wider world. Yeah. Communicating research isn't just about ticking boxes for funders, although there is that element, and I will talk about that in a minute. Mm. It is primarily part of the academic mission, Mm. I think, Mm. of improving everyone's understanding Mm -hmm. so that we can progress as a society. And I think that's incredibly important. Whatever research you're doing, whether it's science, whether it's arts humanities, whether it's incredibly niche, every little bit of added knowledge Mm. increases our global awareness and our global understanding. Mm. And in the modern age where things are so connected, that's even more important. There is, of course, the more prosaic side of that, which I briefly touched on, which is that in an age where funding is increasingly uncertain, a lot of funders are building into their their grants and their contracts, a mm-hmm. clause that says you have to do some amount of yeah, outreach I've, or some I've amount of that. engagement. Yeah, and I've also worked with scientists who are like, I need to do this, but I don't know where to start. Can you help? Mm. And, so yeah. purely on a, a practical financial academic career level, yeah, this is increasingly becoming a requirement. Okay. And to be quite honest, if you're spending all your time doing this stuff, you kind of want to talk about it and, and share it with other people. Well, that's the other thing. You know, we can be very high-minded about it, but also it's just, it's fun. Yeah. I mean, surely if you're spending your time researching something, it's because you think it's really cool and it's really Mm -hmm. interesting. Mm -hmm. And you probably want to tell people about it. Yeah. And then when other people also say, yes, that is really cool and really interesting, it's a lot of fun to get that feedback. It is. And speaking of feedback, I know I've I've, I've worked with um, polar scientists at at various points in my career. And there's one one person I worked with who said to me, you know, they were initially a bit nervous about doing outreach and public engagement, but they kind of really got into it. And one thing they found was really useful were the questions that people asked them. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't always like super specific stuff. Like sometimes the question that an eight year old asks you about <laughs> ice, it can be like they can be really pragmatic insightful. and insightful. And sometimes they ask you this completely left field question and you're just thinking, I'd never thought about it in that way before. And this is what this this researcher was saying. They had mm. those completely just random questions that thought actually you know what i'm gonna follow that up i'm going to do something with that you never know what ideas that's going to spark i know and you never know what connections that's going to spark either so we've spoken quite a lot about 
communicating research and people um, seeking out help in, in actually being able to do that. Do you think that researchers should consider communication skills as um, a part of their overall academic development in the same way that they have to develop other skills? So this could be early career researchers looking at their professional development, or it could even be more established uh, researchers who've been researching what they've done for 30, 40, 50 years. Do you think that they should consider that as a part of their skill set? Absolutely. I think that communication skills and public engagement skills are as important for academics these days as research data management skills Uh or any of the publications stuff they need to know in order to actually get their research out there for various reasons and one of those again comes back to the funding issue is increasingly a requirement yeah um and also particularly you mentioned early career researchers it's an excellent way to start Mm -hmm. to cement your academic reputation oh definitely um, and actually get your name out there connected with that piece of research Uh for more established academics it's a brilliant way to share your wealth of experience with the Mm, wider world and to inspire the next generation of of researchers and academics as well so it works right across the board and I think rather than being seen as an add-on that's you know nice to have if you Mm -hmm. can do it but isn't particularly important it should be seen as something that is very much integral to the research process as I mentioned earlier Cambridge University has an amazing external affairs and communications office they're a great team they're a fabulous team Go check them out, have a chat with them. They will be able to talk you through the entire process and yes. help you with training and skill you up with whatever, everything you need. Other universities do probably have a similar equivalent, so go and seek them out. Yes, and I know that um, there are different points in people's careers where they will get communications targeted stuff as part of an existing package or through their office. And there's lots and lots of different opportunities There are lots out of training there. opportunities out there. And I know that academics are very busy and very pushed for time and it may seem like one of those kind of luxury items that you might not have the time to do yes if you are able to i would highly recommend that you do it and and definitely see it as another way of disseminating your research yeah well as we said before you're you're just telling people about what you're doing you're Mm. shouting about this stuff you know my paper's out go read it that's as simple as that absolutely so we've spoken a lot about people coming to you to ask for um, help with with translating their research. What would you ask a researcher to do before they actually came to you asking for your help and with getting their research out there? Is there anything specific that they could do beforehand to prepare or to make the whole process a little bit easier or smoother? It's an interesting one. Um, Just have a think about it, I think, really. Mm. It goes back to what we were saying in question one, really, the idea of this elevator pitch. Yeah. You know, have a think about what your your main message is yeah. in your research. Is it, we have discovered a cure for this disease? Is yeah. it, we now know something about the way the universe works that we didn't know five years ago? Yeah. Or is it, this obscure historical figure was actually really interesting and had ideas that we can apply today? Or even sometimes it can be, we just got this funding, it's awesome, or we've just started a project. It doesn't always have to be no, about exactly. results. It can be so also, you know, we're doing main, this thing. What's the main message? What is the... the one sentence summary Mm. i think if you can nail that you're pretty much halfway there yeah so that'd be something that i'd like to encourage people to think more about Mm -hmm. the other thing is who do you want to communicate this to and why yeah do you want this to just go everywhere Mm -hmm. is this something that you think is amazing and everyone in the world should know about Mm -hmm. or is this something that you think well, maybe it's a hands-on project. You know, maybe I've done something with robotics or something mm-hmm. with archaeology, and mm-hmm. school kids are going to love this. Cool. Yeah. Or do you think that this is something that has a, a non-academic interest, but it's still quite a specialist interest? Yeah. You know, so people who are interested in local history or interested in poetry or whatever uh-huh. will find this interesting, but maybe it's not going to make front page of the Times. No. So who do you want to talk to specifically? Who who would you like to hear this message, and also why? Is it because you've discovered something? Is it, as you say, because you've got a research project coming up that you want to talk about in advance? Is it because you've just finished a research project and you've just published a monograph? Yeah. Is it because you have a lecture series or a series of talks or something that you want people to go to? Mm -hmm. Is there a call to action there? Do you want want people to do something as a result of hearing this? Yeah, so rather than just like, okay, this thing happened, so Mm. you actually give them something to apply yeah. it to their lives so have, or to have, book on or whatever. Have a think about why it is you want to communicate this because that will change how it gets communicated, I okay. think. If it is something that's just, this is really interesting, yeah, then that's obviously fine and brilliant as well. But if there's something where you want someone to respond in some way, then you need to sort of yeah. have a little think about that. 
The other thing is interest and passion. Obviously, you find your research interesting. Yeah. What is it about your research that you find interesting? Because mm. that way, rather than trying to sort of second guess things and tailor things to what you think an audience might want, yeah, you can communicate what you think is really cool. Because that way, you'll be able to do it with passion and with authenticity. Yeah, and you'll come across as a human being rather than a scripted PR release. Well, yes. and that's really, really important. Yeah. Well, sometimes people find the fact that, for example, somebody cuts up brains for a living because they work in neurology. Mm sometimes more interesting than what they actually found out yeah so absolutely. the methodology can sometimes be just as interesting if not more interesting than the findings yeah so excellent there's always something to be excited about and it's yes. just a question of teasing out what that something is fantastic so thank you very much for that ryan that was a really really interesting discussion no, thank you for inviting me on fantastic and i hope that our lovely listeners found that interesting as well and gave you lots of sort of food for thought and, and different things to consider when you're looking at communicating your research So until next time, this has been the More Methods podcast. Take care and see you next time. Bye. Bye.